Hey, Captain Scott here at Marker 24 Marina. We've got Captain Rush down from the Keys. We're getting ready to go tuna fishing. The weather lays out, like they say. We are prepping our ballyhoos. We're doing two sizes, one for the tunas, selects, and then mediums for dolphin fishing if we do that. So prepping the ballyhoo is a really important part. It's, it's really key to having a good swimming bait. And that's what we're trying to do is recreate a live bait from a frozen one. So Rush is taking an arrow shaft and he's gonna remove the eyeballs so that it helps with the rigging. The copper wire passes through the eyeball cavity to anchor the hook in. And it also, sometimes an eyeball will pop out and kind of drag a bait off to the side. And so he's gonna remove eyeballs and I'm gonna break their backs, squeeze the poop out of their belly, crush their air bladder, and all that is for maximum flexibility. And then we're gonna snip the peck fins off and then we're gonna bag them up, keep them cold, and then we put them on the hooks tomorrow. So we're using copper wire for the rigging. And so having that, not having to poke through the eyeball each time, which sometimes kicks your wire off to the side, and it really lets us anchor the head onto the hook because you don't want a fish to be able to grab the bait and strip it off the hook. My first captain said, you can miss the fish, but the head better still be on the hook. So that, that's a quick and easy way to take out the eyeballs. Now that copper wire can just pass through there at will. Now, depending on how tough the baits are, these are really good, but I'm gonna pinch its back. I'm watching on top of the back for the vertebrae. You can feel them pop in a good bait and you'll see the skin raise up as it pops. And I'm almost doing like a little massage and I'm gonna go pop, pop, pop. And I'm gonna pick up my finger. Some people drag down, but they're taking all the scales off. So I pick up my finger, go to the next spot, pop, 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 pick it up. And when you get kind of by the pelvic fin, you can't really get the tail to pop much beyond that. So now it's popped. I'll give it an S curve. And that's what we're after is that maximum swim. Okay, so once a bait's flexed and it lays on the ice all night, it kind of stiffens up. So before we put a bait in the water, we flex it with an S curve to get the, and it'll go right to swimming. If you throw it in without doing that, it's kind of stiff still. and We don't want to wait for it to start to swim. We want it to go right to swimming. And so the next step then is to, same thing, we're not rubbing our thumb down the bait. We're pressing and then picking up and moving and we're going to squeeze the poop out. And when you're up here in this region here, you're gonna feel a little crunch and that's the air bladder, which is made up of a bunch of little bubbles and you're crushing those because they can make the bait taut and you want it to be loose in the skin. So you're doing two things at once there, get rid of the poop and then I'm passing back to Rush and he's gonna snip off with scissors this little pectoral fin because they're very susceptible to a fin being like rigor mortis off this way and can make your bait lean over. We are gonna pass it over to Rush and he is going to snip off the pectoral fins with the scissors and trim the bill down to about an inch with the scissors. And that makes for an extremely streamlined bait with nothing sticking out. And we use the bill a little bit for the copper wire twist. If you wanna prep all your baits that you're taking on the boat, do them ahead of time if, if you can because the last thing you want to do on the boat is be trying to prep them or you get in a frenzy, you end up grabbing one that's not prepped and then the big one turns it down because it looks like a popsicle. So, so what we're doing now is taking the ballyhoo to the next step. We've prepped our medium ballyhoos and these we're going to use for like dolphin trolling. If we find an edge or smaller than the selects, we're going to use for tuna. We're using a ringer swivel, which has a little rubber O-ring. It's a fairly new product and it is cleans up your bait box, it's quick to put the hook in, the hook just passes through the little rubber o-ring real fast and then put it out. And it cleans up your bait box or so you have nothing but a bag of prepped baits. We are using a little chin weight to help that, that chin weight's going to be tucked up in here and that helps act like a keel and stand the bait up and then when you're towing from the swivel. And we sometimes use J hooks on the spinning rods, you can do it, circle hooks for sail fishing and different stuff, so it's a very versatile way to do it. We're going to prep them all, so that all you have to do is reach in the cooler, stick the hook through the O-ring, put it, flex it, put it in the water, and it's great. So I'm going to show you real quick. Now the only thing I did beyond the normal prep that we did earlier, I have a barbless hook I've made, and I poke a little hole. I pre-make a hole in the little soft beak part, and we normally, everybody's used to sticking from underneath, and that's easier, but coming from the top, it's harder. So if you pre-make that, because you are coming from the top with the copper wire, 
Oh, and they do, some people use them on L. I've always preferred copper because it's, to me, cinches better. Monel gets kinks later that cuts you when your hands are soft, rips your shirt when you're trying to straighten them. So now I've passed through the little chin weight and I'm gonna seat the swivel, the, the barrel, it's a barrel swivel with the O-ring. And so you're gonna pull gently the first part of the barrel swivel into the forehead of the bait. And then I'm gonna tuck the chin weight right there. Gonna, each, each time I'm doing a step, I kind of cinch. Now I'm going to take my copper wire, and I'm using about 14, 15 inches, and I'm going to pass it behind the gill. I'm holding the chin weight. Come across to the other gill. That, that gives really good anchoring to the skull. Now I'm going to straighten it. I'm going to go through that eye and see how easy that is with the eye gone. That's one behind the weight, through the eye socket, and this is just anchoring that so it can't go anywhere. So now I'm anchored to the chin weight. Now I'm gonna concentrate on anchoring the swivel so it can't be torn out through the front of the head. So I'm gonna go one behind, and I'm gonna put one in front as close as I can to the swivel, get lean on wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and go back through the eye. eye. I'm gonna push that up to the swivel. Like I say, cinch it a little each time, and then take up your slack, about half of that, and then we're gonna snip off that right in front of the wire and snip it instead of trying to break it because it will break a lot of times back here in the back and your bait's ruined. And so now that little o-ring on its head, it's chin weighted, we're pulling these naked. These are naked swimmers. They swim great, easy to stick the hook in, and, and yet when they grab it they can't pull it off very easily. I mean it's anchored. You do have to feed it to them because the hooks, just like circle hook fishing or dink fishing, the hook's all the way in the front, so we fish loose drag, so there's a drop back, good healthy drop back, because they got to eat the whole bait, but they never suspect a thing. And then we just keep a bag of them in the cooler, and that's your bait box. A bag of them, you just reach in, grab one, stick it on a hook, flex it, put it in the water. It's awesome.